Welcome back everyone to TNO, The Last Years of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Michael Lover. And right now, we need to sit down with MLK. So my goal for this campaign, at least early on, is to just ram through civil rights as fast as possible, hopefully before the elections. It's only April 18th, 1966. But we need to sit down with MLK because it'll improve civil rights. <clears throat> but more importantly, it'll replace destructive race riots with race riots. So, cool, the meeting. President Johnson sat nervously during the entire meeting, even with a gulf in political power between the two men. Johnson took on a humble and reserved tone when speaking to MLK Jr. President Johnson explained that he was eager to continue the struggle for civil rights and build upon the success of his Voting Rights Act. He said that Reverend King could tell his community that they have no greater friend in the fight for racial equality. <clears throat> Indeed, we do not, Reverend King replied, and... The VRA was a true boon to our community's ability to make their voices heard at the polls. You can count on our support, Mr. President, yet there's far more work that needs to be done than you may realize. Writing a few laws is easy, but solving the entrenched social inequality that the black community faces in this country cannot be accomplished without fighting against the endemic poverty we face. The evils of racism, economic exploitation, and militarism are all tied together. You can't really get rid of one without getting rid of the other, as the whole structure of American life must be changed. Reverend King continued, You can't talk about solving the economic problem of the Negro without talking about billions of dollars. You can't talk about ending the slums without first saying profit must be taken out of the slums. You're really tampering and getting on dangerous ground because you are messing with folk then. You're messing with, with captains of industry. Now this means that we are treading in difficult water because it really means that, that we are saying that something is wrong with capitalism. If America does not use her vast resources of wealth to end poverty and make it possible for all God's children to have the basic necessities of life, she too will have to go to heck. President Johnson was guarded in his response, saying that he was committed to fighting the war on poverty as a key plank of his Great Society program. The President thanked MLK for all his support, and the meeting concluded cordially. How great can the Great Society become? And then we all have to crack down on certain businesses, and NPP will obviously uh, you know, benefit from that, as well as assist Southern police forces, inspect polling stations, which, you know, is great and all. I really want to do the more um, stuff with the environment. Also, I did look up, and it was said that you guys, well, you guys, and as well as, like, you know, Reddit, and wherever you can find information about TNO, that we're going to keep as much political power as possible. So, we're done with Italy, like I said last episode. So, Italy, and even though it looks pretty secure so far, except for the south, you know, for senators, it is what it is. But, yeah, I think I'm done investing in Italy. If they go to Japan, whatever, it is what it is. It sucks, but we, we've dumped enough PP in there that it's kind of a waste right now. So, Congress next Daylight Savings. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. Remember, kids, spring forward and fall back, which is the literal, literal way I remember how to do that. So, uh, very weak. What do we do that one? What if we did that one too? It's middling. Actually, do we have a focus, a national spirit for that? Because we're doing reshuffle police forces. If you like to read it about it again, please go right ahead. But let's keep going on. Race riots. Stubborn Southern businesses. Lyndon Johnson looked over the contents of the manila folder laid out on his desk. It was a report of thousands of businesses across the South who had refused to observe the new desegregation rules that the government had been attempting to enforce for the past few weeks. Flipping through pages and pages of names, dates, and places, the president finally reached the end of the report. Given the vast amount of resistance to civil rights, it seems necessary that for more effective enforcement, more strict punishments for offending entities are in order. Johnson sighed. He knew that the South would always try to push back against such measures. Any single step he took in any direction would cause a massive amount of political backlash, either in the South or in the rest of the nation. Few men knew just how hard it was being president, and rarely was it more difficult than in situations as these. He could do nothing, or do something, and be hated. It's gone long enough. Federal policing is the only way. Problems will go away on their own, right? We'll probably click on that one. Um, winning over black America. Now that things haven't been going our way since we were first brought to America centuries ago. We suffered under the lash for years and years, not just in the U.S., but throughout the entire continent. It was by the will of Abraham Lincoln and the grace of God that our chains were finally broken. We had some success in American culture. We had Frederick Douglass. We had George Washington Carver. We had Rosa Parks. These people worked to put us in the spotlight, and my fellow uh, African Americans, though we still face prejudice, our words do not matter. Our vote finally matters. Our lives finally matter. Do you know who made this happen? The Republican Party worked day and night to give us this opportunity. Our great President Johnson needs our help more than ever. He worked to give us a proper right to vote. He stopped every oppressive state that tried to lay a hand on us. I say we give it back to him, to the Republican Party. If you haven't realized yet, my friends, we need them too. We will accept the President's great society with open arms. After several months of campaigning, the Republican Party started to win over some well-known activists to President Johnson's cause. These activists, in turn, reached out to the multitudes of African Americans in the South, persuading them to use a new vote for the party. While some pro progress has been made down South among the new black voters, there's still a long way to go before Republicans could ever become relevant in the region. At least we're making progress. Alright, so what do we have? Basically, civil rights. 
Uh, yeah, we still have that one. Hmm. I guess we no longer have token soul rights, so... We still that three safety net. So, American Malays, we definitely gotta get rid of that one. We definitely gotta get more PP. Which means, we're gonna keep spending more... Uh, oh, look at that. Oh, we got more political power. Look at that. That's awesome. Um, keep doing operations in uh, all over the place, so... Uh, uh, the Rockies look really good for us. The West Coast looking pretty good for us. The Great Plains mostly is looking good for us, maybe except for uh, Iowa. The Southwest is looking okay. Oh, the Great Lakes are not looking too bad either. It's just the South that doesn't like us. So maybe we'll do... Maybe we'll do New England. Let's try New England. How about that? We love New England. And uh, I'd love to strengthen pro-American sentiment in South America, but... Anything else here? No. Oh, center. You know what? We're still going to diminish them. It's okay if we do that. I'd rather them be Republicans than the center NPP, but it is what it is. And that's when we did uh, finish off South America, South America, South Africa, as well as Indonesia, free Indonesia. So that should give us some support for the senators, at least when the election comes around. So inspect polling paces. Might as well, right? Oh, we, we can do it again. There you go. Southern Obstinance. Today, President Johnson has held a press conference to address the major issues at hand with the implementation of the civil rights across America. Many have openly claimed that discrimination is still heavily present across the nation, especially among police forces. The President, in a heavily anticipated statement, ha had this to say. It has been a great many weeks since the passing of America's most recent civil rights bill, however, it has come to the attention of our administration that in many cities across America, the segregated areas remain due to extreme police prejudice, that African Americans are still forced into lower class status due to the strength of the lawmen who are commanded to protect them. Additionally, there have been claims that certain discriminatory supremacist organizations have infiltrated many municip municipal police departments. After so many reports from so many sources, it is in my opinion that immediate action must be taken to rectify this issue. As such, our administration will be moving to reshuffle suspect suspected police forces, mandate heavier background checks and screening measures for new officers, and break up the bonds between many law enforcement agencies and third-party elements such as the KKK. Already, the move has drawn criticism from the South, most notably from Alabama Governor George Wallace, who called President Johnson a tyrant for his infringement upon the rights of the states to enforce their own laws. It would appear that many politicians of the far right wing of the NPP are moving to block any legislation that the Johnson administration can introduce to regulate municipal police. As it stands, it appears that if the President wishes to see his dyers realized, he may have to do this through executive order. Say it's right, huh? Well, oh well. We can still do all this stuff, but I, I want to keep... We're just going to go beeline through this as fast as possible. A beacon in the darkness. Our country should be a beacon of light for more people than that want freedom from the boots of fascism and Nazism. There are rejected individuals who often end up enslaved or killed must be saved. We must loos be loosening restrictions within our current immigration system to make it easier for immigrants to enter this country and work hard to become American citizens. We should be careful, though, in how we implement it to make sure the process doesn't become chaotic and possibly harm the country. Opening the floodgates might also help so many people, but it might allow Nazi spies to easily enter on the other hand. It remained too restrictive. We alienate more people still. Let's make sure we pick the right solution. And federal polling regulations? A moment to reflect. Well, we're going to lose PP anyways. You know what? Maybe we can get to 150. America wins issue for liberty and justice. Okay. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Uh, let's oh, can I not let time go on? Oh, that was weird. I, I pressed the space button when it let me go on. All right, whatever. We only have one Earth. The Beach Boys released Pet Sounds. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. Album's amazing. This album is amazing. Environment, environment, stability, operations. Oh, good. Operation success is always good. Give me one. That's one more day. Oh, can we get at least one more day there? There we go. Okay, so we're going to lose PP anyways, and I'll do both of these. So we'll do that one, and we'll do that one. And now we have no PP. Oh, this is not good. This is really not good. Protect American sen sentiments? Sure, why not? There you go. Good luck. We have 60. And we're are we done with research? We are done with research already. Polls are updated. Let's see. And it's probably pissing off a lot of the people in the MPP, the Deep South. Oh, New England is looking... Ooh. And they're already a far-right incumbent, so... Center leading RD, safe RD. Oh, that's not good. Leading... Oh, Texas is far-right. Leaning towards RD, so maybe we'll do the Southwest next. Yeah, maybe we won't do that one. Oh, come on. Come on, game. <clears throat> Education is weak. All right. Well, after the Beacon of Darkness, they run a good campaign. All right. Actually, when do we... When do we do? Oh, we have five days left. So, 
Let's do for those worthy. Even though we must be a beacon of hope and freedom, we cannot just completely open the borders to every human on the planet. Instead, we must consider excluding certain amounts of individuals based on a lack of skills that could be problematic to our country's security. All elements of possible moral defect from immigrants must be screened and possibly excluded if a threat to our national security. Yet, if we actually consider excluding certain people based on subjective morality, we would be doing damage to our own country's potential. This decision must be made with respect to all options. Good, good. Keep it locked a little more. Good RD campaign. That's nice. And what, what can we do here? Oh, more uh, spy stuff. CIA, what do you want us to do? Concord, how's this place looking? Uh, I don't really care too much. Strengthen the Irkutsk. Actually, who, who's winning in Russia? All the men's presence been below the lid on the box office. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. So apparently it was Yagoda over here. And then you got this guy. And then you got Omsk. Omsk always seems to be winning. Tukhachevsky's actually here, huh? Uh, I don't, you know what? Let them all kill each other off. It doesn't really matter to me too much. Get more expertise? Sure, why not? I'll peek in the darkness. Those to include LBJ sat in the Oval Office. The rare pleasure of pure, unabashed silence consumed the room. Paper after paper, meeting after meeting, the day had been a long one. And the sun was now just caressing the western horizon. Suddenly, the door creaked open, and through it entered Vice President Edmund Muskie. The two proposals for a new immigration bill had been finally finished. Democrat written, said Muskie, placing the one down in front of Johnson. Republican written, he said, placing the other. Johnson exchanged no words with Muskie. He sat simply, scanning his eyes through the Democrat-written immigration bill. It was very, very long, though, and re very restrictive. Immigration quotas would be increased by upheld. Travel to the U.S. from Germany and Japan would remain heavily restricted, and only slightly less than requirements on applying for a visa. In short, it was extremely conservative, as he expected it to be. Technically, it wasn't even totally written by Democrats. The Republicans had, had a part in writing it as well. But the Dems always did have a tendency to drown out others. Next, Johnson flipped the Republican proposal. At this point, it was just a rough cut, still subject to significant future revision, but the groundwork and basic contents were there. Johnson found it to be much more amiable to his plans than the previous one. If implemented, the bill would remove immigration quotas entirely, open up travel to and from Germany and Japan and other foreign powers, and generally lessen restrictions on entering the U.S., which has been very strict since the end of World War II. So, which one are we going to move forward with? Asked Edmund Muskie. If we go ahead with a Democrat proposal, we'll probably garner some more votes with it, so it's more assured. Our proposal, on the other hand, is much more in line with our policies and campaign promises, but it'll be hard to push through Congress, and the Democrats will consider a slap in the face. The Republican proposal, give me your tired, give me your poor, your huddled masses. The Nationalist voters will strongly disapprove. Um, the Progressive voters will strongly disapprove. Um, uh, hmm. Which one do we want? I'm not really sure. The progressives won't like that. And we're going to lose, probably going to lose a lot of Democrats here anyways. Uh, I think we did say we want to do New England, even though we just technically did do, did do New England. I kind of want to do the Southwest. RD. Leaning, leaning, leaning. The Rockies, though. Hmm. You know, we'll do the Rockies first. Let's do that one. I don't want to lose any more political power. The progressives will strongly not like that. Who to include? Yeah, I'll leave the Republican one, doesn't matter to me. For those worthy. <clears throat> and we have no PP. Go figure. Cool. Alright, the Immigration and Nationality Services Act, the shifting winds. Bo Albright stepped out of his car, stretching his legs after the long drive to Legion Field Stadium in Birmingham. His wife stepped out beside him and they began to walk to the entrance. I'm glad the governor's holding a rally about this whole integration business. Negroes ain't got no business being in my store, no matter how much those darn Yankee attorneys tell me I can't stop them. Oh, Bo, said Penelope, you ain't ever been so riled up before. It was a three-hour drive to Birmingham. I'm surprised you're so upset. Anyway, anyhow, I sure do hope that there's a good seats for us. They filed past the ticket inspector's booth into the stadium. It was filled with thousands of people, even down on the field, thousands of fil filled seats surrounding George Wallace's platform in the middle. Bo and Penelope surprisingly found empty seats there, not 50 feet from the governor. They sat and listened to George Wallace talk about segregation for, well, about like half an hour. Now, said Wallace, who is here? It's a small business owner. Bo stood up in a sea of seated men and women. Wallace called him up to the stage. What's your name, friend? Have you been to a national progressive rally before? Bo almost seized up in front of the thousands who were watching. Uh, my name is Bo. Bo Albright. My shop was forced to let in Negroes by a federal inspector. Um, I ain't ever really cared for politics. His words were cut out by a thunder of applause from the audience. George Wallace took the microphone from Bo's hands. Do you hear that? An average, nonpartisan businessman was forced against his will to integrate. This is what President Johnson wants. He wants to take away our right to choose, not just his states, but his people. He's stepping up his enforcement measures, and I say let him. The National Progressive Party will stand for what's right. And as I've said many times before, segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. At least the new rules are being enforced. 
But this bill will make sure immigrants more are able to enter, but their entry will be based on deserving qualifications that can make them potential Americans. Qualifications such as an education, needed skills, and so forth will be sought after to make sure they get priority in our new system. Another major provision for this law will give immigrants a clear path for naturalization as well. Finally, racial qualifications are eliminated completely to allow for a more fair and just system of entry that represents the moral character of this entire country. Let's make this immigration system more fair and just for future Americans of the world. Increase success of uh, civil rights. Hopefully that'll give us more political power. We lose political power. Oh my goodness. Continued resistance. The meeting had a the meeting room had a thick, uncomfortable air to it, caused in no small part by the unusually low ceiling and the burning cigarettes of Attorney General Nicholas Kazenbach. The smoking AG sat opposite L President LBJ, with Governor of Mississippi Ross Barnett signing or sitting just a few seats down. Kicking the clan out of the Southern Police Force has been a more involved fare than previously thought, began Katzenbach. Of course, replied Johnson. That's why we're here. Something's not working. We need to determine what it is. My recommended course of action is to break up the police departments at the core, said Kazenbach. Senior and junior officers need to be more separated, and suspect departments should have full federal investigations placed under them. Let's not push this too far, said Barnett. Too much pressure, and you might be facing a case in the Supreme Court. The current stress you're putting in on them is more than enough. It just needs time to sort itself out. Fine, then, said Kazenbach. I think we should put some additional measures on, just a, bit, a little bit tighter, perhaps. The discrimination is supposed to be bad in Georgia. I'll call up Governor Garland Bird and tell him how we want to get his state in line, but he won't refuse, even Mr. President, or won't refuse the president, even if he has proven difficult in the past. If our plans work in Georgia, they'll apply them to the rest of the South. <clears throat> well, who, who needed political power, right? Who needed political power? Hans Taylor. <clears throat> Hans stood on the main deck of the SS Columbia, a shipping barge as a massive ship pulled into the port of New York City. The large vessel passed by Ellis Island, a mighty woman with a torch watching over the bay, Lady Liberty. This was everything Hans had ever hoped for and more, as Germany had fallen to pieces around him. <coughs> he fled from his university dormitory in, to Denmark, and then to Scotland, for more than a year. <coughs> He had bided his time in Scotland, struggling to learn English, drifting from job to job, and desperately seeking an entry visa into the U.S. Hans wish finally came true with President LBJ's new immigration bill, which, after decades of hostility, allowed German nationals to enter the U.S., of course. Once they had to obtain a visa, but no longer was travel to America limited to the rich or the powerful in Germany. Now, even poor little Hans could pop onto a ship for, to a new world for a new life. The barge was reeled into port on the north side of Manhattan. Walking down the plank onto the concrete dock, the Hudson River that was back, and the wind in his hair, he had finally arrived in America. The stench of ocean salt and garbage and industrial pollutants had denched the air, or dominated the air, but Hans could care less. It was less the smell of refuse and more the taste of liberty. Hey, you! Hans turned around to see a greasy-looking dock worker with jet black hair and a distinct accent talking to him. You just going to stand there, or can we get to work unloading this boat? I'm sorry, replied Hans in a sickly accented English. I just arrived from Sweden. My name is Jan. The man looked over him, a pensive look in his eye. Well, John, the Swede, I'll need a few more hands on the dock soon. How would you like a job working for me? Hans looked out over the massive hive of humanity called Manhattan. So much was different and new and breathtaking. The Empire State Building, jet planes flying far overhead, and the hustle and bustle of the living, breathing city of New York. He finally made it. Yes, replied Hans. I'd love a job. And I have a cup of coffee in my hands to keep us nice and warm. MPP run a good campaign. Well, good for them. For those worthy, though. And we're done with our air doctrine, I think, which is very nice. Uh, someone did ask in the comments from the last video whether we were going to um, play as Bennett someday, and we will. I promise you that. We definitely do Bennett someday. someday. I'm not sure when, but eventually. Uh, oh. And salt and law and order. Oh, boy. Oil processing is very nice. Um, so that stuff is all done for now. Better artillery, maybe? Can we do that one? Yes, we can. Well, Democrats and elements of the far right have found themselves openly standing against the Johnson administration. After President Johnson ref himself refused to support the additional anti-discrimination measures proposed by Attorney General Nicholas Katzenbach. These changes come after more than a week of protests surrounding comments made by Georgia Governor George Wallace. Georgia Governor. In which he called upon the South to resist tyrannical government measures. In many cities, the protests became violent, taking a long time before either calming down or being stopped by local National Guard units. Senator Strom Thurmond called the week of protests an assault on law and order, with Governor of Mississippi Ross Barnett calling in the days of rage, a term now popular with much of the nation. Even now, even the original anti-discrimination measures proposed by the Johnson administration were being ignored in the South. The KKK seemed to be openly working with local authorities and hate crimes have skyrocketed. Overall, the past few weeks have proven disastrous for the President and the Republican Party, and Johnson will likely see much more emboldened resistance from the South in the future. Disastrous. Isn't that great? We keep losing pee-pee. 
But the Nash Immigration Nationality and Services Act, we'll see what happens. Hopefully we can still pass this. That's my goal. Like, for right now, we have 49 senators. We might not be able to ever have this many senators again for Republicans. So there's four senator MPP, and the most, at least one or two will vote for us. So that's why I'm trying to rush through this as fast as possible. Even though I'll try to do some of this if we possibly can after we get through this stuff. So a roof over one's head. Use ghetto riots. Yeah, we want that one to get more politi daily political power and stability and political power. So use ghetto riots. Look at the chaos. The looting, destruction, and violence has ruined so many of our great cities. And that looting and destruction comes from African-American ghettos <clears throat> that remain impoverished, in destitution, and utter misery thanks to our current party's inability to solve this crisis. We must do something to soothe the anger and rage from the black community as well as prevent more violence between fellow Americans of all colors. The riots showcase the current failures of our government as we remain in stagnation with the bill. This inaction must end or else our black citizens will be in future jeopardy. Japan wins issue. It is what it is, whatever. Yeah, the good the RDs run a good campaign. That's good. That's really, really good. Those to exclude. As work continues on the new immigration bill, an important matter has come to the forefront. Skills. Many applicants will surely have backgrounds in medicine, engineering, and science. At the same time, many others lack such abilities and will instead move into service and agricultural sectors. The question is, do we want to establish a strict uh, skills criteria for potential immigrants? It would likely appease both the nativists and Congress who make noise about unskilled labor taking American jobs, but at the same time, progressives would prefer generally open and tolerant policy. So, what system should we follow? Uh, the Republicans go stronger. We need doctors, not line cooks. Ooh, I want the Republicans to grow even stronger. As much as we want the those guys to go... Oh, man. Urgh. You know what? Maybe for this campaign, I want Republicans to go stronger. And they will. There's there's a one or two focuses that allow the Republican Party to grow even stronger. I We need that, but you know what? Screw it. Screw the PP. Screw it. We're not going to have PP in this campaign. Operational success. Tough on racism. Cool. There's been a rise in the number of civil rights cases that have been working their way through the Department of Justice lately with prosecutors, FBI agents, and all more investigating a variety of racist incidents throughout the South, bringing police officers, Klansmen, white supremacist leaders, and others to trial for their violence, intimidation, and flouting civil rights laws. While the gears of justice move slowly, not all the cases will be decided in the government's favor. There's a growing outcry throughout the South that the feds are overstepping their authority, trying to criminalize personal opinions and thoughts, trampling the First Amendment, and dismantling states' rights. One particular case where a hotel owner in Georgia was arrested for allowing a white mob to break into a black man's room, tie him up and smash his belongings and threaten to lynch him has become the focal point of the op this opposition, with the Yaki's faction of the MPP denouncing the FBI's case, arguing it was overstepping their authority when the state courts could have handled this and undoubtedly let the white hotel owner and the mob to walk free. Yet, the Yaki has gained support throughout the South for standing up to the man and his efforts to make the black equal. Not so fun when the boot is on the other foot, huh? Cool, and that was actually another comment saying that if we're going so hard on like civil rights and all this stuff, um... Are we going to be able to get Yaki? Maybe. There's no, There's no. you know, guarantee. So, maybe. That's definitely a maybe. Rockies, toss of leading RD. Let's do West Coast, maybe. West Coast or RD, RD, RD towards MPP. The South is pretty much lost. I want to do New England again, but I guess we'll do the West Coast. I'll do it. We'll do that one first. Okay, I lied. New England. Strong civil rights. Concerns among the Democrats. Mr. President, this is a disaster and you know it. Lyndon Johnson repressed the urge to sigh over the phone. Usually, when someone like Congressman Side Hairlog kicked up a fuss, he invited him over for a chat and loom over him until a rat soul got the picture. Right now, though, he'd have to sit in the Oval Office and take it. Sid wasn't the only Democrat pissed over the contents of the new immigration bill, but gosh darn it, he was loud. My district already has plenty of illiterate foreigners and infiltrators, so we can sure as crap don't need more. But you, you kowtow to those senator dudes when you know they'll never vote for either of us. I don't have to tell you that this will hurt the unity of a party, and it's fragile already. Johnson checked his watch. In a few minutes, the Floridian would probably have yelled himself hoarse, and then it would be on the next call for the next angry legislator. It's going to be a long, long day. There you go. We can do this, too. Even though it doesn't really matter anymore. Um, I only want to use this just to get more political power eventually, so. I get more monthly population. Stability goes down. We lose 75 more political power. LBJ? Well, good luck, LBJ. We're going to need it. Man, oh, man. I want to see what's going to happen during the election, though. That's my. That's what I really want to know about. As you can see, we're building up a lot of um, <clears throat> nuclear power stations, too. Oh, but maybe first, a little to axe. If someone does not show mercy to people, Allah does not show mercy to him. This is the wise words of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. With the last comfort of Malcolm X, the final thread of rope, he firmly grasped to not fall off a cliff. 
Whenever he watched Klansmen march through the streets, whenever he drove through the neglected streets of the Bronx, whenever he watched that empty suit known as Martin Luther King spout empty platitudes about forgiveness and love, he felt like he was going to snap. Reciting that mantra in his head dozens, hundreds of times, sort of dampened the seething hot rage deep within him, but it didn't fully extinguish it. It merely funneled into productive thoughts, a fervent drive that turned him into one of America's biggest civil rights advocates through nothing but his own labor. However, the comfortable knowledge of the fact that the eternal oppressors would get their just desserts in Janaman Jananam wasn't enough for Malcolm. He had no patience for the afterlife. He longed for racial justice in this world instead of the afterlife, and dedicated his entire life to this cause, going as far as to change his surname to highlight the systematic destruction of West African culture waged by the institution of slavery. No actions were too radical, no words were too dangerous when it came to dismantling the centuries-old white supremacy that defined the U.S. since their inception. Malcolm X made lots of enemies over the years. Millions of people want him gone, and he already came to terms with the fact that his death will likely not be a natural one. What good is an activist if his actions don't challenge firmly entrenched powers? No, his mission never ends, as long as the proverbial knife sticks in the back of the black man, Malcolm would fight on no matter how. The eternal struggle, of course. The eternal struggle. Cool. Alright, and let's keep making more civvies so we can keep improving our industry and GDP. And good. So we can cut down the national debt someday. We probably won't get through, uh, cut down all the national debt in this campaign, but, you know, it is what it is. But use the ghetto riots. Ah, riots. Stabilize Iberia, let's see. Uh, anything here? Future English American relations. Well, let's help out the Australians, because we can. Nice. Anything else down here? Senate elections. We have about 10 days left as we're still campaigning. So, civil rights are still very strong. Oh, let's pause. Very good. We have high unity in the OFN, and okay, so that gave us slightly more political power with effective civil rights legislation. They run an incredible so campaign in the Southwest. The conservatives are grumbling. Mr. President, the Great Society is starting to be put into effect. And good news, the overwhelming majority of American supporter efforts to reform society to make it more equal and fair for those on the bottom of the totem pole. But as our efforts bear fruit in Congress, there are already rumbles above opposition buildings. Some conservatives in the Democratic wing of the party, as well as the far-right MPP, are starting to complain in private, and there are anonymous op-eds in newspapers all over the nation denouncing the efforts. There is really nothing to be worried about now, though. Most of these people would never have voted for the Great Society anyway if it wasn't a political suicide to support the first acts that are generally popular with the American people. The few that did vote against these acts did so on the grounds of high costs and the encroachment into the state's prerogatives and not necessarily in regard to the ideas themselves. In general, our plans are moving ahead and we still have widespread support, and so we should better be able to continue pushing forward to make America more better, more equal nation. Good news? Tired with our agenda. What do you mean a tired with our agenda? It feels like there's just things in the game that are just trying to push you to, so you're not doing well. Like an artificial barrier. I mean, some of this makes sense. That we should have some uh, problems here, but still. <clears throat> the rising fear. Over the past several weeks, America has borne witness to a new firestorm of anti-immigration sentiment. Stoked by activists on the far right of the NPP, protesters have gathered to state capitals and federal buildings across the country. While most of the protests are a small in number, they're plenty noisy. Placards proclaiming foreign spies out, hey LBJ, traitor to the USA, and America for Americans are plastered to TV news screens from San Jose to Bar Harbor. Meanwhile, TV and radio ads are discussing everything from Argentine fascists to black South African radicals are hitting the airwaves. While opinion polling shows that most Americans disapprove of the sentiments, it's exceedingly difficult to ignore. Are we not a nation of immigrants? <clears throat> hmm? Coffee. All right, where are we going to go next? Southwest is a toss-up. Oh, God. My hope is at least keep 40 Republican senators. That's my main goal. Mm. Southwest. Let's do that one now. Use the ghetto riots. All right. Hopefully, get more daily political power because we're now we're looking at really bad numbers for now. Oh baby. All right. Intelligence analysis is good, good to do. Um, we're gonna have enough expertise. It doesn't really matter too much anymore. So, uh, yes, in my backyard, a roof over one's head. Actually, we might be able to do one of these actually as well. The Republican wing of the party will groom our prominent begin pilot programs. Ooh, ooh, improve the social safety network. Teach them well. We do get more political power that way. Um, we have about a month, two months, one, two, Fair Housing Act. Increase the status of civil rights. You know what? We're going to beeline this. We, I, mm -mm. We'll be a band if we cannot secure majority votes in, the, in Congress. Oh, man. A roof over one said, though. We cannot allow any Americans who are minorities to suffer housing discrimination any longer. Afro-Americans, Mexicans, and Asians all suffer from constant discrimination. 
despite their hard working and moving up, most of them live in slums and misery or on the streets where they end up causing problems for the rest of us. Even though many of our white American voters want nothing to do with them, letting the colored suffer and squalor will not only make our country continue to look bad, will possibly not even fully secure support for our party from those new voters in the next election. I implore my fellow Republicans and fellow Democrats to support the Fair and Housing Act, not only for our coalition's sake, but for the sake of America. I don't think we'll have enough time to get through this. We, we, I don't think we will. We have this one, and then the next month, and then the following month. Oh, that's going to be... Oh, I don't know if we can do that one. Ooh, if we did not do one of these, then we probably could have done that, but a break in the storm. After many weeks of a sporadic protesting over the inability of the Johnson administration to force its desegregation rules upon southern police departments, many cities across the south are beginning to calm down, with no protests and no injuries from the clashes between the protesters and the KKK or police. It appears that violence is coming to an end. It appears Governor Maddox of Georgia and Governor Wallace of Alabama are also standing down, allowing the old federal rules to be enforced once more. <clears throat> The period of violence, often called the Days of Rage, led to weeks of violence between protesters and pro-police elements all across the South. These pro-police elements often consisted of the police themselves, as well as members of the white supremacist KKK. All told, over 60 Americans died during the fighting with more than 1,000 injured or hospitalized. It appears that the Johnson administration, with the violence included, is moving to once again enforce its desegregation rules upon the South. After many weeks of chaotic, exhaustive work, Southern municipal, munici municipal police departments don't seem to be in position to resist. Perhaps the fighting blood that Kalan's support drive? Remove high racial tensions. <clears throat> now, nah, that's a good point. One more political power. Uh, so that helps out slightly, slightly more. So, you know, we'll take it. And then Japan wins issue. Mafia, Stonewall Jin. We must read up our first. If you like to read about this, please go right ahead. Um, yeah, I think this happens every single campaign. So if you like to read about that, please go right ahead. So, we open up to the, to the queers. Yes, my backyard. Now I understand the worries about less fortunate people entering your beautiful suburban homes and wonderful neighborhoods. Maybe you are afraid that they will give your neighborhood a bad name, or that they will cause trouble, or that they would even not be able to fit in and end up excluding you from society. <clears throat> However, that will not be the case. If you can get your congressman to support the Fair Housing Act, you can be guaranteed that less fortunate will be able to rise to your own level with your hard work and dedication. Oh, that's really good. Nice. Those underprivileged people who end up having an easier time moving in will become your friend, and if anything, make your neighborhood stronger. I implore you as good and kind American citizens to help the less fortunate in their struggles for an independent and happier life. Let's say yes for an even stronger backyard. Cool. All right. Let's grab some of that. We already did. Nice. Can't really not bad. The most... Oh, good campaign. Good. Good to hear. The most basic need after we go... Yes, my backyard. And many of my years of service as a legislature... Le or legislator. For the great state of Texas, my belief fortified in my ability, or in the ability, of our country to legislate through issues of the greatest import and severity. The issue of equal rights for American Negroes is such an issue. It is an issue that has been festering since the foundation or founding of our sanctified nation. Even if we uh, <clears throat> defeat every enemy, we should double our wealth and still be unequal to this issue, then we will still fail as a people and as a nation. The failure of our, any of our Negro brothers to rise to the station and prosperity merited by their strength of character and wealth of enterprise is a betrayal of the American dream. I want to speak about a specific crisis of inequity before us today. The lack of fair access to housing is an inequity that per perpetuates all other racial issues. Negro fathers are denied access to em employment, their children access to schools, all through the myriad sinister confines imposed on their recruitment of poverty, a property. Across the country, actors of hatred continue conspire to limit the bounds of freedom afforded to their fellow Americans. The time for a local action to free the black homeowners is past. We need federal action to break the backs of these malign interests. Malign interests. To my opponents here, and to those who would seek to avoid action by the national government in their own communities, the answer is simple. Attack the racial bias of lenders, sellers, and renters with all your might. Make a world where the passage of the Fair Housing Act is a distant and, and antique necessity. Until that world is reality, the U.S. will be there to protect the rights and opportunities of all citizens, white or black. What about yellow or brown, man? You're not talking about my own town, right? We'll look a little better in Northern States, which is good. We got slightly more political power, which is good as well. We got a lot of manpower. You know, we probably won't need all of it, but that's okay. All right, well, it's unfortunate that Italy won the, is now in the co-prosperity sphere, which really just sucks, but, I mean, there's nothing we can do. With LBJ, like, I'm glad it is. I'm, I know more about LBJ now, like, how to play as him, but, like, yeah, it's, I don't know. It just, whenever I play as LBJ again, because I probably will, maybe someday, he might get an uh, you know, update or rework or something, I'll have a better understanding of what to spend our political power on and what not to spend our political power on. As you can see, we've built a lot of air bases already, because we're running out of things to build already. In 1966, so. More nuclear reactors, anybody? No? Okay. But, let's go ahead and read about the Fair Housing Act. 
We've come so far on civil rights, yet we need to finish a job. A fair housing act. We should should we manage to push it through? We will be this administration's last great legislative achievement in the civil rights debate. By prohibiting any and all discrimination in renting and selling houses, we will be seeing a profound change in the character of our towns and cities. The scale of change that the Fair Housing Act would bring in its status as the last great civil rights bill by this administration have made it the center of political firestorm. Segregationists see the housing issue as the last great bulwark against enforced desegregation and will oppose the bill as strongly as they can. Many within our own party encourage compromise to prevent extensive fallout with conservative voters. Meanwhile, the African Americans look to the White House to see if the president has as good as his word. Any of our choices will have consequences, but we must choose. Yeah, I don't think we'll be able to get uh, to finish that uh, you know, soon enough. Um, Deep South, let's see. New England is... Mm. Mm. Upper South is pretty much lost. The Southwest is a toss-up. God dang it. Then again, we don't have any of these. Except we have one Democrat here. So as long as we get one Democrat or one Republican here, I think that'll be okay. Oh, well, the center's... Uh, I'm more interested in the center. The, the Democrats are okay, but the, the center is more aligned towards our ideology. The Great Plains, toss-up, our leading RD, leading RD, leading RD. Um, you know, you don't even trust the polls. Don't trust the polls. We're just going to go with the Great Plains. I haven't campaigned there yet, so... But we've already spent all the PP for strong civil rights legislation, which is pretty good. Yes, in my backyard. God, I hope we, I hope we can pass this. If not, I might have to finagle some things around. So, provisions and legal exemptions for housing. The Civil Rights Act of 1866 allowed for all citizens to rent, hold, sell, and buy property, but gave the federal government no means to enforce this principle. African Americans' leaders are adamant that without equitable access to housing, there will be never really be equality of opportunity. We're counting on overwhelming support from black voters to survive the wave a backlash to our civil rights agenda, we need to pass a bill that meets their standard. Meanwhile, the far-right MPP has been the most successful in mobilizing opposition with the language of housing discrimination. Why communities fear losing their more subtle means of res resisting integration. Even conservative Republicans who normally support civil rights are making noises about the freedoms of association and commerce in response to our feelers. Our policy teams have come up with several options for a proposal to Congress on housing rights thanks to our creative writing skills. We can pass a strong bill that limits exemptions, a bill that retains the strong language of the former, while introducing enough carve-outs uh, to at least limit the speed of integration, or at least a token bill that omits protection or jurisdiction for those targeted for pursuing housing. A strong stand in racial inequality, or in inequity. Compromises. Oh, we're going to go all the way. All the way with LBJ. We'll see what we can do. Education is still weak, though. And actually, poverty should be getting quite a bit better. Look at that. 69. Nice. Even though it looks like <clears throat> we might have a certain yaki already kind of coming aboard. Come on, please pass the goddamn thing. Democratic backlash. Much of the strongest opposition to the profound or proposed Fair Housing Act is coming from the Democrats. A prominent Louisiana radio host went on a diatribe against the cursed mono party yesterday, excoriating Democrats for throwing in with the Republican Party that clearly no longer shares their values. Republicans are being characterized as puppets of organized Negro agitators trying to bring crime and lawlessness to white communities. It's unknown what electoral consequences this new messaging will have, but it's throwing the RDs and MPPs into a flux. Democrats are weighing their options. It is what it is. All right. <clears throat> Since this, we don't have to actually do anything if we do all this stuff. That's fine with me. We do that. Hey, oh, well, they run. That's fine. Deep South. It doesn't matter. We're not gonna be able to get them anyway. So, oh boy, oh boy, oh crud. Oh god, it's already happened. Oh, can't we can't pass the words first? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Wait. The center lost votes. <laughs> the Democrats lost votes too. Okay, we saw 49. The center lost everything though. Oh, as long as we get one Democrat, I don't think we'll get any of the far right. The far right is looking pretty, you know, strong here. There's literally almost a third of all senators. New England is pretty, pretty Republic. Holy crap! It's ex it's extremely Republican. Holy crap! A 49. Progressive backlash. The Fair Housing Act sees a national spotlight and not in a good way. Its sweeping product protections and robust enforcement mechanisms put the writing on the wall for many, uh, many all white communities. Town halls from Massachusetts to California are full of angry white homeowners fretting about house passage will affect property values, schools, and crime. The NAACP has launched listening tours in most states to encourage and advise the black first black families moving into previously disencouraged areas. This endeavor has been covered breathlessly into the press, portrayed somewhere between a violent invasion and a conspiracy. Even some MPP center politicians have publicly criticized the bill and their widespread calls weaken it. In defense of liberty? Oh, we're going to go all the way with LBJ, man. No no stopping the brakes. Jumbo says we keep going. So it says, this will be abandoned if we cannot secure majority votes in Congress following the bypass of the focus cell. A broadcast for all to see. And now we prepare for President John, President John Glenn of the President of the U.S. of A. to address the nation and the world at a press conference regarding the development of American Nuclear Security Initiative and what he's done for a country. Broadcast begins in 3 to one 
Um, I think I've already read this one. I'm going to play as John Glenn, but I guess I'll read this one too. Good evening. To the great people of the U.S. of A. And to all people of the world who seek to live within a greater age and up age above the likeness of oppression and tyranny. Some have stated that the world may only rest when the nations of the world lay down their arms and work together for freedom for all. However, with the dangers presented on all corners of the world, from the east to the west, it's our duty to ensure that the U.S. remains well prepared for any potential dangers to the freedom and liberty the U.S. of A. is built upon. This was the reasons for which the American Nuclear Security Initiative was created under the watchful eye of our administration's national security advisor, Cyrus Vance. There, he has provided America a new shield against the terror fascism through the development of the U.S. A.'s nuclear arsenal in terms of strength and number. Today, the American Nuclear Security Initiative has stated the confirmation of the development of 50,000 nuclear warheads readily available to be deployed wherever it may be needed. Thus, we have shown a preparedness for whatever storm may come to endanger the country in the coming times for the security of our nation and security of democracy across the world. God bless the USA and even good and good evening, America. From the family couch in the US to the office of the Fuhrer to the seat of the Prime Minister of Japan, TVs across the world showcase the broadcast and oh, to each a level of hope, fear, or danger erupted from all as thoughts of nuclear diplomacy adorned all. A shepherd for a safer world. Now, that I think that only happened just because we built so many nuclear reactors because that has happened when I played as John Glenn before which was actually really fun. But, I'm pretty sure that only happened because we built so many nuclear reactors. So this is not supposed to fire because John Glenn isn't president. As you can see, we are we still have Jumbo here. Big old Jumbo. Alright, the Fair Housing Act. Hopefully we've got it passed. It is now November 1966. And hopefully, I hope we got it passed. But uh, let's see. Republicans look better. Let's get more political power with the beginning pilot programs. Preparations are now underway for President Johnson's clash with the endlessly inhibiting force of poverty. To begin this struggle, we will pass a series of small-scale assistance programs. While not creating a significant impact themselves, they will hopefully set the stage for even greater projects that will follow in the months. However, now, for now, we may offer benefits to America's poor in the short term. Muddy waters. Backlash towards the Housing Act has reached, reached a fever pitch. An outspoken supporter of the bill, an N NPP senator, member of the Illinois State House, was brutally beaten last night. His masked assailants left racist graffiti and their tire iron at the scene of the crime. This attack has crystallized support for the bill generally among many in that wing, but liberal support of the bill is still lacking. A group of senior Republican congressmen came to President Johnson today and warned that pushing through the Housing Act would do irreparable damage to the RD coalition. They argued that driving white voters towards the far-right MPP en masse would do more to hurt civil rights in the long term than taking a loss on the issue. Johnson argues that it's no better than ceding civil rights to the center MPP, but his colleagues prefer not to throw the already unstable party alignments into chaos. With both houses of Congress gearing up for a melee, it's time for the administration to make a final decision on whether to put forward the Housing Act or not. Extremism is unpopular. Extremism is no vice. We should be able to win, right? Because like it said... Oh, look at that. So, Republicans didn't lose anything. So, the Democrats and the center both lost votes, which is actually not good for the center. The far right got eight more, which we already saw, but... The Deep South defended their seat. Uh, the Democrat Party lost their seat, of course. The Republicans lost their seat to the NPP far right in Kentucky. But... Oh, yeah. The Upper South has lost. Uh, the, the far right in Texas lost their seat to the, to the Republicans. Senate election results are in. Of course, some polls are updated, so that's pretty cool. I think we did... Pretty, uh, civil rights are very strong. Look at that. <laughs> we have no political power. Powerful civil rights legislation. Nice. Very, 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 very nice. Come on, Jumbo. You got this. Create Office of Economic Opportunity. We want more daily political power. Yes. Voters in the North and Steel Belt will approve. Improve social safety networks. Consolidate previous costs. Effectively reducing them by 50%. Nice. All right. Let's get back over here. Maybe armor. Let's get some of that. That's fine with us. In three days, we'll have to eat integration, which we'll go ahead and do. A day of tears. Oh. Oh, if you wonder about this, please go ahead. I mean, this happens every campaign pretty much as well. Um, it's about Walt Disney. Let's pay a laughter for every tear shed. So it is what it is, you know. Begin pilot programs, but create an uh, office of economic opportunity. President Johnson's campaign to lift America's poor out of their hardship will be a massive undertaking from start to finish. The creation of a new bureaucracy and the many accompanying programs necessitates coordination on a large scale. The office of economic opportunity created on the president's orders will organize all those programs and make sure that every initiative we take runs smoothly. Aid for Switzerland? Oh, this is new. Overseas freedom dies. The legions of Germany marches onward towards the destruction of all they see. Goring has declared war on Switzerland, and even as the Joint Chiefs of Staff advise the President on this mess, Switzerland burns. Already, the press has reported of terrible crimes done against the natives and the brutality and ferocity of the German war machine and of the desperate struggle to retain the nation's freedom. While many in America are still exhausted from the debacle in Africa and probably Indonesia, our military prepares its arms and chomps at the bit for the possibility of striking Germany closer to home. Many of the government have proposed sending material aid to Switzerland, as many in the international community have done, in the interest of aiding the military. Many of our generals, however, favor a much more direct approach, and have requested permission to send not only guns, but an expeditionary force of advisors to help halt the German advance, much as we had seen in Africa. Loud is about to cry freedom by Jingo? 
Um, we must practice diplomacy with a firm yet careful hand. Send the guns. We can give them technology. Uh, maybe not. Cool. The moderates are content. Mr. President, we've gotten more of the Great Society passed through Congress with the wide-ranging majorities and the support that these proposals and ideas have been receiving in polls for the past few months. In general, the people are with us, and Congress, including the RDs and much of the MPP, are so supportive, so we can expect the bipartisan support needed to get through more. <clears throat> That said, some of the more conservative and moderate members of the Republican Democrats are talking to staffers in Capitol Hill and are feeling like we've already done a good job. And maybe, should maybe start winding down the Great Society. One senator even said that we've done enough for this decade and should let the next generation get a chance to do some stuff. While no one is taking a break, breaking away and refusing to go along, go, refusing to go along, we will most likely start seeing more resistance from the Democrats and some, even some of the more moderate Republicans who believe that the Great Society has gone far enough. Any for the Great Society acts could start arousing concerns of everything they like to worry about, like tax hikes, debt, socialism, and states' rights. So we should take this into consideration as we move forward. Duly noted. Oh, poor, poor Switzerland. Now let's see if Goring can actually break him, because Goring sometimes can't break him, so. Oh. Oh. That's gonna be, what is this? Yeah, diminish the far right image. That's actually probably really good to do. Even though we can't do anything else here, so. Um, I don't mind, like, going to other nations and protecting or boosting pro-American sentiment because that would actually be very good for us. But we get over one political power a day. Not bad. Assistant current programs winning over black America. Look how the world around us is changing with President Johnson at the helm. We've been given the incredible voting privilege that has eluded us countless times in the past. Our poor blacks in the South are more likely to afford cheap housing thanks to President Johnson's Housing Act. The schools for black children are being given more funds and they're being recognized for the academic achievements. Our older blacks are receiving the care they so desperately need thanks to the new Medicare program. Folks, I see a lot of potential with the Republican Party after looking around at the great society we're living in. If we keep voting Republican, I believe all American lives will get better and better. Our campaigning is proving to be very successful at gaining the African-American vote in the South. The more activists we influence, the more momentum we gather to topple the traditional parties that have dominated the South for decades. We have noted a substantial increase in popularity among blacks in poor regions, which can only mean that our great society is working. Our campaign has shown more some slight flaws. Our hardcore traditional Traditional whites have started to denounce our platform, claiming that we are seceding or ceding too much to be black to the blacks. This would become naturally with additional uh, or addition of new party voters. The issue should not gather enough support to put a dent in our party, but it's something to monitor. Nevertheless, every black voter who once faced oppression at the booth now prepares to defend the newly given right or newly given a vote with all they have. Our reforms are truly reaching out to all Americans. Even more support from the African American community. Good. Stop get measures. Improve social safety networks. Cool. Reduce our support amongst voters in more conservative areas. Protect the most vulnerable. Republicans go stronger. Truman had the right idea. Ooh, I want to do that one. We'll do healthcare for the nation. Oh, but we lose political power. But you get 0 .05 here, but you lose 0 .1. That's not worth it. We lose consumer goods. Actually, it's not bad since we already have, you know, pretty much everything built already. But I do want to get this as well. Hmm. But you leave more political power. Oh, my goodness. Teach them well. Oh, my goodness. I mean, yeah, we still have this stuff to do, but this stuff is boring. I'll be honest. This stuff is kind of boring. Like, military stuff. We don't use that much military stuff at all. We've already been to the two nations for now, so... You know, South Africa and such, but... Third generation... Have I done a land doctrine yet? Oh. We do, do grow a little more unified, which would actually be pretty good to do as well. So... Military outlook. Uh, a community action initiative. Look at that. We lose political power. Less consumer goods. Gain more support in progressive areas. Improve the social safety network. I kind of like that. I want a beeline for all of the great society, though. So... Um... Assist current programs, healthcare for a nation. Will look a little better. Yeah, why not? So, the U.S., a nation where no man should ever go uncared for, has failed to take care of its own citizens for decades. The so called healthcare industry consistently drives up prices on its services, putting life saving care out of reach for millions of Americans. Our reliance on the private sector to carry the burden of the country's healthcare has been misplaced. Now, it is time for us to pick up the slack. President Johnson has proposed a series of programs to repair this fundamentally broken system. Regulations, financial aid, publicly funded options, all actions must be considered if we're to ensure the health of our citizens. Good, good, good. Oh, there we go. I like this one. We gotta do this one every single time because we need more PP. Oh no, they actually broke through. Wait. Uh, it just looks different, but yeah, they actually broke through. That sucks. Happy 1967, everyone. It took us quite a while to get us to 1967, which kind of sucks, but that's okay. That is a okay, my friends. How are we looking? Not bad. Wow. That's not bad. A call from Wallace F. Bennett. The nature of the Republican Democrat coalition meant that the vice president was often take, asked to take one for the team if part of the coalition was upset. Vice President Muskie. Uh, Senator Wallace, Wallace F. Bennett's displeasure registered clearly over the phone. Is the President's Great Society simply going to involve throwing 
people of busy work on the taxpayer's dime? Muskie rolled his eyes. Bennett had never hidden his sour sourness over the losing the 64 primaries. Senator, the Office of Economic Opportunity is purely intended to compliment, compliment the private sector and state-level jobs assistance. Tell me then, Bennett remarked pointedly, how on earth is the federal government supposed to know what jobs need filling in, in Schofield, Utah? I'm sorry, where? That's the point, Muskie. The, o the OEO is trying to solve a problem that's better handled locally. Bennett said emphatically, if the president keeps going like this, we're going to find Democratic voters slipping to George George Wallace and his state's rights people. Some states can't help everyone, Senator. That's where we come in. Sit, Muskie countered. Just because it's going to be difficult doesn't mean we shouldn't try. Nothing great is ever easy. Some of the Democrat voters will defect to the MPP. That's okay with us for now since we already built what we needed. <laughs> all right. Can we build anything at all? Um, we don't. Eh, you know what? Screw it. A little more rubber. Why not? Screw it. Why not? Yeah, you can only build so many civvies. What the heck? All right, Alabama wants nuclear reactors. We'll give them nuclear reactors. So be it. We've done really well. Look at that. Four billion. Operational success. Nice. we got 40 more political power, even though we still have none. Protect American interests. Oh, Paul Swiss, 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 people. How sad. Healthcare for all nation. Um, the problems go stronger. I want to do the uh, Truman had the right idea. Two decades ago. President Truman proposed legislation that would revolutionize the American healthcare system. Seeing the pitiful state of the healthcare industry, he proposed widespread government action to address a growing problem. At the center of the proposal was universal coverage for all, covering all aspects of care and massive investment into the construction of hospitals throughout the country. This kind of action is long overdue, and so President Johnson adopted many of the same policies championed by Truman in his campaign to ensure the nation's health. Uruguay likes us more. We love Uruguay. What else do we build here? My God. What? Anti-air. Because you never know when German bombers are going to be flying over New York City and the Empire State Building. And you never know, they might be flying over Kansas as well. Look at all that we're building. American industry has never been stronger. So strong that we might actually start cutting back a little bit. We, Yeah, actually, at this point, we literally might be just cutting back at construction since we can't build that much more, so. There you go. Good, good, good. Since we can't build any more civ CVs, or, you know, civvies. Oh, breaks my heart. Even though we can't cut anything else right now, that's fine, whatever. A shore up the, oh, what is shore up the what? Oh, let's get this one first. And land auction. Oh, uh, we'll go with air support. We love air support. Wait, what is that? LBJ is going all the way. Oh, it's all this stuff. Shore up the OEE. -E. Uh, OEO. Proof social safety network and poverty rate will go up. Support in southern states, will, as well as those in the Rockies, will increase. Okay, we like that. But we'll reduce our support among voters in more conservative areas. Well, our, isn't that also in the south as well? Like, they're fairly conservative. Like, oh, civil rights are very strong. Look at that. Regulated insurance markets. Oh, no, 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 we got, uh, let's see. Office of Economic Opportunity. Oh, we get more political power. I like that. Robust safety net. Powerful civil rights legislation. Very cool. And we need to increase the uh, OFN unity. So we could, we want more political power. Cut the spending and we'll probably cut construction next as well. So, because we're pretty much done building everything up. So, it sucks we can't build anymore. That really sucks. But Truman had the right idea, my friends. Protecting the most vulnerable? Yeah, we want more political power. Like in so many other economic crises, the ones most affected by our defective healthcare system are the nation's poor, even as advancement of technology marches forward. They are tragically left behind and swindled out of the care they need. In the first of many acts to improve the situation, President Johnson signed a list of executive orders and urged legislation through Congress. These preliminary bills, which will do little on the long run, aim to protect those who cannot take care for themselves due to the unchecked distortion of the healthcare industry. Oh boy. The Dragon Lady. Today is our lucky day, Mr. President. We have some technology that will change the Cold War. The President had been tapping his foot under the desk for five minutes now, waiting for the Lockheed representative to make his important announcement. Just what could you possibly have now, Mr. Johnson? I haven't been impressed with your company in a while. We've been working on engineering this new spy plane, one that will expose the Germans and Japanese for who they really are, the representative says, a hint of suspenseful destruction filling his otherwise quiet voice. He steps aside to reveal a blueprint for his new revolutionary aircraft. The long, slender vehicle failed to make a good impression, first impression, on the president, who at once believed the aircraft was too light. He would need more information and fast. The representative continued, This baby is a new and improved U-2, complete with better cameras for better recon. It's also faster than some of our recent planes, so you can go anywhere and back in no time. Not only that, Mr. President, but it's bigger and stronger when it can maneuver, it can take a hit. Now the president was intrigued. If what he says about the plane is true, the U.S. would certainly dominate the Cold War. Air reconnaissance like that would be very useful in diplomatic situations, situations that the U.S. could win outright. All right, Mr. Johnson, I think that we should take your plane on a test drive to make sure it really is what you say it is. I'm thinking we should send this plane over to two, Germany. Oh boy. All right, so we just finished up Truman had the right idea and protecting our most vulnerable. Revisit the WMD bill. Improve the state of health care in the country. I don't want to lose any more political power yet. Republicans grow more prominent. Um, I do want to beeline through all this stuff. 
Chatbot Community Action Initiative. Uh, gain support from these people. Propose a jobs core. Industrial expertise goes up. That'd be good. Uh, Vista, Vista of the future. That's not bad. Let's do this one first. Community Action Initiative. Talk on the national and federal levels about fully addressing poverty is nice, but only through the mobilization of communities throughout the nation can we have the manpower needed to confront the economic abjection. With the new outreach programs that would encourage participation on both the local and societal level, we can grant new opportunities to the poor to ensure that no, no one struggles to get by. The federal government will serve as a guiding hand leading impoverished communities, wherever they are, to be to prosperity, wherever, wherever to there be to be found, leading them to prosperity. These are the voyages. Uh, if you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. And to read about the boys, please go right ahead as well. Picking up good vibrations. Nice. A great society, operational success. We helped out with Iberia because we could. And certified gold, if you like to read about that, please go right ahead. Elvis Presley is back, my friends. Cool. Uh, what do we have here? Contribute now. Okay. Uh, Vista from the future. The Volunteers in Service to America, or VISTA, program is the next proposed organization under the OEO umbrella, aiming to provide lower-income communities with new opportunities while also serving the rest of the nation, similar to the Peace Corps. VISTA provides members with a steady income, health coverage, and a myriad of other benefits in exchange for volunteer service. Recipients will not only see other areas outside of their communities, but also gain the skills needed to fill the many roles mandated by today's work. Excuse me, by today's industrial economy. Let's get to work. Follow it up with proposed job score and then solidify the food stamps program. Yes, yes. Support in the southern states as well as in the Rockies increase. Proposed job score. Youth unemployment rates in the USA are of great concern to the president as well as the Department of Labor. And yet another project to add to the regimen of proposed welfare and outreach programs, we aim to create the Jobs Corps. This organization under the larger Department of Labor will provide education to equip America's youth for a multitude of fields as well as work until they can get back on their on our feet. The majority of their of the service would be spent on improving national parks, impoverished communities, and other areas which have fallen under the responsibility of the federal government. Hopefully, the program will provide vital training and experience to those who need it the most. Very nice. Very, very good. And we can't cut this down. Why? Oh, because we, we don't have political power. That's why. Oh, we're stuck here because we don't have enough political power to cut this down. Man, we need so much PP. So much PP. The coast. All oh, the coast solutions. Oh, boy. Oh, the mission failed. If you'd like to about both of these, please go right ahead. Oh, this is not good. This always happens at the same time. Maybe we strike a deal. Oh boy. Can we do art of the deal, maybe? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Ooh. Diminish the image of the end center. I guess we technically can, but they have no senators already, so. I can do that one too, why not? The Japanese ship leaves. Uh, just another day at work. Great. Actually, it's better if you want to go all the way until the last little event here and, and then win that last event to get America to e grow even more united. So. Pilot. Okay, both of them just give up. I'll take it. If you like your brothers too, please go right ahead. Welcome home. So, wow. What is, that was a really low chance for the, both of them to both be like, just for the other powers to just give up on us. That's actually really cool. Proposing job score though. And then solidify the food stamps program. Already we've seen great success within our food stamps program. In the areas currently running the program, the impoverished have enjoyed greater access to food as they no longer have to fight over scraps. This experiment has led, it's had had its shortcomings though. The administrative burden has been higher than what we expected. In addition, making sure the stamps are distributed to all who need them has proven difficult. As we continue expanding, we will have to keep an eye to patch up these kinks within the program. In light of the program's success, it's time to go nationwide. We will immediately begin expansion into the new states. Before too long, the entire nation will have access to the food stamps program. With this step, our war on poverty will be all the closer to being won. Expenses will rise, but what else is new? And we'll get new decisions, even though we have no PP. Big sadness hours, of course. Nice. And then we'll go vertical envelopment. Very good. Are we going to propose a job score? Uh, where is the... Yeah, transport helicopters. Does it make any sense? How are our helicopters looking? Well, they're looking slightly better-ish, maybe? I don't know. It just this seems very bugged. Food stamps. And then, the Economic Opportunity Act. Remove a great safety net with replace low minimum wage with acceptable minimum wage as well. Oh, okay, so with this one, we still want to cut this down. We need more PP, so we'll keep spending that. That's fine. 4.5 billion is not bad. Uh, so this one, acceptable minimum wage. We get lose max factors, in say, which I don't like. We get better at poverty, better industrial expertise. Replace unemployment subsidies with low unemployment subsidies. 
poverty will, will be, slowly begin to improve. Voters in the North Steel Belt and West will approve, but voters in the South and Rockies will disapprove. The vast majority of our poverty-stricken are simply down on their luck, stuck at the bottom with no way out. It's not uncommon for a citizen to simply lose their job and fall below the poverty line whilst unable to find new employment. We cannot allow our people to fall by the wayside, forsaken, and forgotten. President Johnson will be introducing a new bill designed to combat these issues. The Economic Opportunity Act will start by increasing unemployment subsidies and provide a government-assisted service to find new, un find new employment. <clears throat> Not only this, this act will assist those already in the workforce, increasing federal minimum wage. This new bill will show the people what, the, what we are striving for, paving the way for f further legislation. Cool. The Crest membership. Let the members vote. They vote yes. Billy's votes. As New Zealand, Australia. Everyone votes for it. But do we really want them in? We have more than enough civvies. But we're definitely improving on... Um, or I guess the rate at which we build... It's kind of sucks that we, we have this, but we can't even really use them too much. I, mean, I guess we could build a lot of forts if we really wanted to, but forts don't really mean too much. I mean, being honest with you, like, forts really don't mean much for America right now. It's not like we're going to go to war with Canada or Mexico, so there we go. That should keep them busy for now. Cool. Not even going to use tanks either. I'll probably just delete the entire army at the end anyways. Oh, wait, the Commonwealth of England and Wales opposed the Brittany membership. What the heck? All members? Negotiate with these guys? We need... Why do we need 364 political power or $728 million? What the heck? Ah, but finally we're almost out of our deficit of, of uh, PP. That's good. Consolidate the program? Yes, please. During our administration, we have managed to create several assistant programs throughout these great states. As helpful as these programs may be, we have consistently been slowed down by the unending bureaucracy involved in running these programs on a state-by-state -state basis. If we're going to reach the greatest number of people, we're going to have to start cutting red tape. Unifying all of our programs under the federal government is sure to both reduce the administrative burden and lower overall costs. However, many will see this as an expansion to federal power, as we take control out of the state hands. Within the more conservative parts of our country, this is unlikely to be a popular measure. New, we're reducing reduce them by 50%. Nice. Aid for Norway, overseas, freedom dies. The legions of Germany march onward towards the destruction of all they see. Goring has declared war on Norway, and even his joint chiefs of staff advise the president on this mess. Norway burns already. The press has reported terrible crimes done to the natives, of the brutality and ferocity of the German war machine, and the desperate struggle to retain the nation's freedoms. Well, uh, actually, I've already kind of read this one. This is exactly the same thing as the one with Switzerland. Oh, boy. To war by Jingo? Sure, why not? We can have that. Sure, why not? Uh, that's kind of disappointing that it's the exact same thing, but that's okay. One day left. Good. Consolidate the program for cheaper costs. Oh, we need more political power. Oh, are you kidding me? We need more political power than that? Uh, uh. Um, stop. Stop. Uh, get measures. Okay. Assess the current program. Or assess the current programs. Before new programs can be proposed and passed into law, an inquiry into the current federal policy situation is warranted. Currently, various welfare programs from past administrations exist with their own funds and bureaucracies. Under the executive branch, before moving on to more bold measures, President Johnson has recommended an examination of these programs to determine the best method of management is for the future programs. Determining what is necessary and cutting the fat where needed would also be prudent for the sake of fiscal responsibility. Good. Good, good, good. We only have one Earth? Oh, poverty goes better. Oh, I want to cut down construction so we can have more money. Hmm. Oh, there goes Norway. Bye, Norway. The conservatives are upset. Well, someone's going to be upset all the time, so whatever. Mr. President, I'm pleased to report that the most recent parts of the Great Society have been voted on by Congress. And... I'm ready for you to sign it into law. These new actions are important, just like they all are, and so have healthy majorities supporting them in Congress and across the country. However, there are still some dark clouds on the horizon. Some Democrats voted against the last bill, and some of those conservatives that are like that like small government and pulling yourself up by the bootstraps and all that. While it wasn't enough to threaten the passing of these laws, it does mean that future laws will most likely require that we work with the center faction of the NPP to ensure that we have enough support to pass through an increasingly divided Congress, even though there are no senators left. You should know that, as well as I do, that this could be a problem. The RDs were formed to keep the peace and stability of America first and foremost. If the RDs break apart, that can lead to much greater crisis and chaos in the future. Message received. Oh, well. What can we do here? Oh, we can do those two things down there. That's fine. It is what it is. But I want to get this one done as fast as possible, consolidate the program, and the stopgap measures. Like the other major policy changes in federal policy, the expansion and creation of the welfare state or system will take time, both due to opposition and the overall sluggishness of the American system of government in implementing reform. However, for the moment, more gradual and incremental measures can be taken to temporarily quench the need for aid. Most of these programs will be short-lived, only providing fixes in the short term that give economic assistance to the needy. Much greater projects are coming down the pipeline, but a reminder to those that 
to the people that something is being done to address these issues will go quite a long way. Let's go do that one. And can we do this one yet? No, we cannot. That's okay. That's a little bit ahead of time as well. Ah, forgot about gun stuff. At least we can focus on what should truly be American guns. Oh, I want to use that to cut down spending. Oh, that's a lot of spending. Wow. Wow. LBJ, you, you, ooh, baby. Oh, now we can do the other one. So I'm going to do the other focus first. That's that's more important to me, at least right now, so. Consolidate the programs. That'll be good. Oh, we bought, oh, oh, are you kidding me? This one costs 50 political power. This one costs 50 political power. Are you, nah. We lost 50 political power because of that. Are you kidding me, man? Are you kidding me? Here, you can do that too. Expand on food stamps. Oh my goodness. Child nutrition. Increase funding the CMS. Expand Medicare coverage. Moment to reflect, of course. Jobs. Oh man. I want to cut it down. We just don't have enough pee pee. That sucks. This really sucks. Death of the dude. Operational success. Uruguay likes us more. I guess revisit the bill. No, I don't want this part. Teach him well. On its most basic level, education is the process of instilling knowledge into children to prepare them for the job market. However, it extends beyond the practical applications. Education is more than teaching and testing. It's an investment into the nation's children, America's future. While the U.S. has produced some of the greatest technological innovators in the world, ineffective teachers and poorly funded schools continue to leave millions of children behind, depriving them of the ability and the freedom to succeed in a demanding economy. It's time for the federal government to intervene and protect their future and the nation's. Aid for Sweden, same thing. Just go and do that one. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Oh, man. Why why does everything have to cost so much political power? Is he doing everything by executive order? That might be a bit extreme. 70s. Cool. Um, land doctrine. Of air doctrine is done, of course. I'll go get that one. Why not? Because we can. Vertical envelopment. Followed up with ground... Air ground task forces. Cool. Teach them well. We get more political power, and then we can consolidate stuff, so this cost isn't so incredibly huge. Gotta love the bureaucracy. Alright, keep spending more money so we get more PP. Come on, England. Uh, yeah, I mean... I guess you can do that one. And uh, the image, image of the far right. Pretty much because next year is going to be another election year. 68. Gotta love the CIA. Alright, got six days left. Technology is going to be done in three weeks, which is fine. The Dance Partner, if you like to about that, please go ahead. This episode every campaign. It is what it is. How romantic. How romantic. Consolidate the program, though. Finally. Finally, 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 finally. Cut down the cost by 50% would be very nice. We have a lot of PP now, but I do want to cut stuff down. Uh, 10%. Uh, constructions, 44. Wow. At the same time, though, I think it's better to do poverty. Nice. Um, head start. Academic base. Poverty. Um, well, let's do one that does poverty and doesn't do too much for us. Healthcare, nutrition. Let's do that one. There you go. Welfare is middling. Healthcare is very weak. We're not going to have enough PP to do everything here, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Consolidate the programs will be very good to get, though. Very, very good. Oh, there goes Sweden. Oh, I thought Norway died. I guess it was Sweden, too, huh? All right, well, whatever. The Head Start programs? All right, cool. In order to foster... Uh, an education system where none are left behind. A new regime of agencies will need to be created. The proposed Head Start programs under the purview of the Department of Health and Human Services will play a pivotal role in the creation of such a system. These programs aim to ease the transition from preschool to elementary school, improve learning abilities, and create a home environment that encourages fat rather than discourages school participation for students if possible. Head Start will entail the employment of teachers and the opening of facilities throughout the country to aid low-income families. Um... Uh, I guess we have received a radio message from Irkutsk in Siberia from a warlord state that claims to be the legitimate successor of the USSR. Centered on the city of Irkutsk, this state is led by Genrik Yagoda, the former head of the NKVD, while numerous high-ranking government members appear to be members of Bukharin's cabinet who have been evacuated to the city. Although Irkutsk is by and large appears to be far more authoritarian than in the old USSR, with the secret police seemingly exerting significant control over the region. They claim that this is a necessity due to internal st instability and the threat of outside agents, and that they will liberalize once the government is able to stabilize the situation. They request diplomatic recognition by government and the possibility of a cooperation between our governments in the future. We are open to the possibility of further relations in the future. In the future. Oh, nice. We got some more technology done. Nice, nice, nice.
I want to cut this down. I really do. But I don't get this focus first. Winning for Black America? Now we have the choice in this next election. We can go with the Republicans who keep backing us up and we'll have her back until the end of time, or we can choose the radicals of the MPP who want to tear this country apart and go back to square one. Ultimately, it's your choice, but I believe the Republican Party is the right choice to help our country move forward. And with your votes, my brothers and sisters, we will continue the changes that have brought many of us hope and prosperity. New polls keep coming in from the new from the government agencies, and we're starting to see a rise in popularity the likes of which we have never seen before. It's very likely that the African American vote we can turn the South completely around. Even in states like Alabama and South Carolina, where the Republicans' votes are few and far between, we started to gain tremendous ground thanks to the large African American populations in these areas. However, it would be a lie to say that these states will totally support the Republicans in the next election. Already, many conservative white Americans are expressing their clear disapproval, and they're quickly ditching our party in favor of the dreaded alternative. Our wonderful activists will do more than make up the loss our party suffered, and with their help, we have already gained so many more African Americans to our side. If we keep pushing for change, we have the entire South in the grasp of no time. Awesome, awesome. Cool. Awesome, we got rid of that, and we can do some more of this. I'm going to get it down a little bit. It's, it's costing us quite a bit, so... Uh, that's a that's actually quite a bit better. Mm, alrighty, let's see. After this, head start program. Thank you very much. And what's costing most here? 75? Costing us 1% of our current GDP. You know what? It costs so much. We'll do that one. We'll do it. And then we'll probably cut down construction some more. And for this, let's end the episode on something else. Sit down with the teachers' unions. Assess material needs. What if we were due to do... I don't want to really do that one. Instead of these guys. Improve the state of healthcare in the country. Reintroduce the idea of social security. That might go well. It might go okay. Then again, we have no senators here. so we Let's save that one for after the elections. Because we might get some senator, some senator senators. So... We'll probably go down here as well. Oh, this just rips our pee, -pee doesn't it? Uh, we'll probably, you know what? I want to do this one, but we can we can wait. So we'll end up with sit down with the teachers' unions. Public teachers' unions, notably the American Federation of Teachers, wield a tremendous amount of influence over the education system, most of which is ex executed through campaigning and lobbying. Since they will be the ones educating children in the revitalized education system, winning their support, especially for ambitious legislation, will be critical to the implementation of many programs. To hopefully codify an alliance, members of the Department of Health and Human Services will meet with union leaders across the country to gain their support, meaning some promise will have to, be, of course, be made. Cut that down. Good. And expand the program. I want to improve poverty. Or, you know, yeah. Experiment. That one first. Cool. And let us end with assess material needs. Oh, this is another event we need to read. The implementation of new education programs will doubtlessly be a costly undertaking, and one thing central to this initiative will be ensuring that schools are correctly stocked. To determine what is needed and where, an examination of the nation's individual schools is necessary. Once a census can be concluded, the process of apportioning textbooks and other classroom supply funds to state and local governments can begin so that every school has the tools for a modern and efficient education. But I think we'll end it there for today because we have gone on long enough. Actually, can we... Oh, oh we can do this one. Are we going to persuade them? We'll try it. Negotiate, pay the money. They can have some money. Let's see if they can let them in. But happy 1968, everyone. And actually, let's read this one first before we end the episode. To achieve this dream of eradicating poverty, President Johnson has established the Head Start program. This initiative, under the auspices of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare, is just the first of what is hoped to be many of by the Johnson administration in an effort to improve the plight of young children in economically disadvantaged neighborhoods, and particularly those of minority groups. Head Start offers summer programs and evaluations to ensure that children from low-income families succeed in adjusting to elementary education and are sufficiently developed, cognitively speaking, in order to, to succeed in school. Opposition from conservatives circles have been somewhat muted, partially due to the fact that popular support for Head Start is fairly high. More vocal opposition to further encroachment on the state's prerogatives of education will only mount should the administration choose to move that way. These are just the first steps. Expenses will rise sharply, and uh, support among conservative states will go down, improve the school system, and our deeds will look a little bit better. But, oh, go ahead and meet them. Very nice. But if you enjoyed this episode, do please leave a like. It does help me out. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we will continue making America a little bit more, or shape it more into a greater society. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.